Algebra 1, Lesson 88, Quadratic Equations, Solutions of Quadratic Equations by Factoring. So, quick intro, quadratic equation, pretty much any equation that has an x squared term. So, that's what we're talking about when we talk about quadratics. <clears throat> they typically follow the form uh, that we see here on the right, which is uh, we have um, x squared, an x, and an x non term, which should be pretty familiar to you guys because we've been doing a lot of work with these lately. And all that work is going to pay off when it comes to solving these equations. Now, before we go to solve them, we have to cover something called zero factor theorem. Um, and I'll do this over here. So quite simply, <clears throat> what zero factor theorem says is if we have two numbers being multiplied, like x times y, and their answer is equal to zero, then one of these numbers has to be zero, because any number times zero is equal to zero. There's no other way to get the number zero. There's no other number we can multiply that would equal zero unless zero is involved. So. Uh, in this case, for this equation, x or y equal 0. <clears throat> and that's what zero factor theorem states. Uh, now, how can we... Uh, now, uh, let's see. Let's use another example for this. Uh, let's say we have two numbers that are represented in parentheses. So again, parentheses equal one idea, one number. And we've got two of them. Like, let's say we have an x minus 4 and an x plus 5 those two numbers being multiplied equals zero. What that tells us is, uh, based on zero factor theorem, that one of these has to add up to zero. So either x minus four is equal to zero or x plus five is equal to zero. Now, how can I figure out what value of x would make this parenthesis zero? Well, if I use the opposite of the number we see here, so negative four, if I use the opposite number, so four, and I plug that in for x, four minus four is definitely gonna equal zero. So then I'd have 0 times x plus 5, which would equal 0. That works out, right? That follows zero factor theorem. Now, what about the other one? What if we did x plus 5? So uh, we've got x minus 4. <clears throat> and then if we use the opposite sign for x, negative 5, then we plug in negative 5 here. Uh, negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. So then we have 0 times x minus 4. And that equals 0. So this works out. So that's how zero factor theorem works. If you use the opposite value um, of the number it's being added to for x, then you have a possible solution to the equation. Now let's see how this works with our quadratic uh, equations. <clears throat> so let's say uh, we have this example here. Uh, we have x squared minus 18 equals 3x. And we need to solve this equation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this equation equal to zero. So that way we can make use of our zero factor theorem. Uh, we do that by subtracting 3x from each side. The right side cancels, and we get equals zero on the right side. The left side, no like terms. So we'll write this in descending order of x squared minus 3x minus 18. And then we have a quadratic equal to zero. Now, these look familiar because we've been spending the last few weeks factoring them. <clears throat> and this is where it's going to pay off. I can look at this quadratic, and I know that I can factor it into uh, x and x. The last sign being a negative means that one's positive, one's negative. So I have x plus, x minus. Uh, and then factors of 18 that will add up to negative 3 are 3 and 6. If I do negative 6 and positive 3, negative 6 and positive 3 add up to negative 3x. So... I have rewritten my equation like this. Now I can use zero factor theorem, which if you remember, I said for this one we'd have to use the opposite of six. So if x is the opposite of, or not opposite of six, opposite of negative six. If x is positive six, then this whole parenthesis would equal zero. So one possibility is x could be six. Now over here we have to entertain this possibility as well. Uh, what if this one was the one that equaled zero? Well, for this one to equal 0, x would have to be the opposite of positive 3 or negative 3. So for our answer, we have x is equal to 6 or negative 3. And that's our final answer. Now, they're not always that simple. <clears throat> Let's do another example. Uh, this one here gives us this equation. We have 3x squared minus 6x equals 9. Again, it's not set equal to 0. So first thing I'm going to do... So I'm going to subtract 9 from each side. The right side cancels and becomes equal to 0. The left side, no like terms, so I have 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Now, I want to factor this. However, 
I can't factor it because my leading x squared term has a 3. So I have to see if I can factor 3 out of all of these, which I can. So I'm going to factor the greatest common denominator. So this is just factoring the trinomial stuff that we should be pretty uh, proficient at. So if I factor 3 out, 3x squared divided by 3 is just x squared. Negative 6x divided by 3 becomes negative 2x. Negative 9 divided by 3 becomes negative 3. <clears throat> Now, the last step, all of this is equal to 0, is I'm going to factor this quadratic. So I still have a 3 on the outside. I'm then going to have x and x. And then the factors of 3 that will add up to negative 2 are 1 and 3. Uh, so I'm going to have minus 3 plus 1, right? Because 1 times negative 3, negative 3, negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. Works out. Now, this one might be a little bit tricky because you're thinking, well, there's a 3 on the outside. The 3 on the outside doesn't matter. We have to factor it so that way we can get the proper values for x. But in the end, if this parenthesis ends up equaling to 0, that 3 is just going to become a 0 anyway. <clears throat> so we go back to zero factor theorem, which means we have to look at these numbers and use the opposite. So x could be negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 would equal 0. Or x could be positive 3, because positive 3 minus 3 would equal 0. And we have our answers. Let me make sure that there's no other crazier problems here. Um, ooh, they do use difference of squares. So the last example I'm going to give you is a difference of squares factor theorem. Uh, <clears throat> so we've got this example. We have uh, negative 25 equals negative 4x squared. Right? So I see the x squared term. And remember, that's what our key thing is to look for with our quadratics, is that x squared. So I have to immediately think, can I factor this? Well, let's set it to 0 first. So I'll go ahead and add 4x squared to each side. <clears throat> that cancels. Over here, what I get is 4x squared minus 25 equals 0. And what we have here, if you'll notice, is we have a difference of perfect squares. So although this x squared does have a coefficient of 4, I don't have to factor it because 4 is a perfect square. So when I do this, the first term is going to become 2x because 2x times 2x, 4x squared. Now, the difference of squares says I have to have a plus and a minus, and the last number being a perfect square as well, the square root of 25 will be my, num my number. So I have positive 5, and then I have negative 5. Now this one can get a little bit tricky though because <clears throat> I have this 2x next to the 5. So I can't just pick negative 5, positive 5 and that be the answer. If I plugged in negative 5 here, negative 5 times 2 would give me negative 10. Negative 10 plus 5 would not be the answer. So what I have to do on these difference of square problems is I look at them each like individual equations and I'm going to solve each of them. So if I have 2x plus 5 equals 0 and I solve for x by subtracting 5 and then dividing by 2, I then have my value for x. So 1 is x could be negative 5 over 2. Now the other one, I'm going to do the same thing but with the minus. So I'll take 2x minus 5, set that equal to 0, add 5 to each side, <clears throat> and then solve for, uh, solve for x. And then it can be positive 5 over 2. So my answer here is x is negative 5 over 2 or positive 5 over 2. So be careful on those. If you end up with a coefficient because you have a difference of squares, your answer is not just going to be negative 5, positive 5. You actually have to solve each individual parentheses set equal to 0 to find out what your actual value of x is. Uh, and then, you know, if you wanted to check this, 5 over 2 times 2, uh, sorry, for this one, negative 5 over 2 times 2, would just equal negative 5, and then negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. And then the same thing over here. Positive 5 over 2 times 2 would equal 5. 5 minus 5 would equal 0, and it works out. Uh, that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.